picked up another rig yesterday. It's a new hauler for the bike and a winter beater. It came with these snow tires, spare tire, uh, and a snow plow that mounts to the front with a winch that makes it go up and down from inside. So I can plow snow with it, but I'm going to put the CT in the back of this just to see what it looks like. This will be what it looks like, loaded up, rolling down the street. That's a CT, so it gives you an idea how small the truck actually is. Cool thing is, all the sides fold down to be a flatbed and they also come off if you don't want to have them on at all. Got little latches. And then I have the seats out because so I'm just checking some things, going over it, making sure all the vacuum lines are good, things like that since I just got it. But the seats obviously would be in here. It is a six speed manual. It's got four wheel drive, two wheel drive. If you're in four wheel drive, it's got a granny low and then five speeds. If you're in two wheel drive, it's just five speed. Uh, obviously it's right hand drive from Japan. This is for the winch up and down. It's already got a Pioneer in it with some Bose speakers, which I have to move because they're right in my face. But at least these things don't even come with like speakers or radio, so kind of nice. Doesn't have AC, has heat. It's got a little tray down there. But this is how you get to the motor. Here's one side of it. Here's the other side. And then pop this panel off to get to the rest of it. But. It looks pretty cool. Alright, this is the first thing I've ordered for the truck. Some headlights. Not the first design choice I picked, but they had the best reviews for the price, so I figured couldn't hurt it. So the factory lights are just the 2B1s, which is like your classic like Jeep, uh, GMC, pretty much everything, sealed beam. Those are the brights, but the dims, we got one out. So I needed lights anyways. Why spend the money on stock ones when I want LEDs that are going to be super bright? So I'm going to put these in quick, see what they look like. See if everything wires in how it's supposed to. And that'll be the first thing I've officially done to the carry. Other than work on it a little bit. I realized yesterday there is zero drum brakes left in the back. The shoes are completely gone. Nothing left of them. Filled with powder, filled with rust, which I'm assuming is why the e-brake doesn't work and the brakes themselves are so spongy because they go almost all the way to the floor before the thing stops. Um, so I ordered rear brakes, I ordered an alternator belt, oh and then the steering arm in the front, the linkage arm, whatever you want to call it, idler arm, bushings are completely shot, you can't buy the arm no more so I bought a bushing kit for it because the steering wheel got some play in it. So. It's got all that before it starts moving, and that arm is just down there flexing. So once I get that bushing in that arm, and then possibly do like front struts, tie rods, all the other arms and bushings in the front, and the rear brakes on, I'll be out on the streets with it. I drove around my neighborhood a couple laps last night just to test out the carburetor since I've been working on vacuum lines and things, and it runs a lot better. Starts right up now instead of kind of messing with it like you would. Uh, this is just from taking the drum off the rear, all that rust. So, changed the oil yesterday too. This thing burns a lot of oil for whatever reason, I don't know. The dude said he had this thing taken in for like all new exhaust valves, new timing 
belt, all that stuff, which obviously you'd have to do a head gasket too, but this thing burns a ton of oil, so I don't know if this dude never had anything actually fixed on it, but the motor sounds, it's noisy, it burns a lot of oil, so chances are I'm either going to pull this motor out and rebuild it or try to find another brand new motor to put in it and then deal with this one on the side. But I'm gonna get these headlights in. Okay, after like a half hour of getting these things wired up because apparently you can't just plug in the factory plug to these LEDs, nothing happens. So I had to like pull some pins, repin the plugs. Now I have the dims. It's hard to see, but what's happening is the dims are supposed to be like this top bulb and then the brights are both of these on or maybe even just this one. I think it's both and then everything else lit up on the side. I can only get either just the brights to light everything up or just the dim to light everything up. I can't get it to do how it's supposed to work where the dims are one set and the brights are another set. I've tried every, every last wiring option. The only time I got it to work with the dims and the brights was once I turned the lights completely off in the truck, key off everything, the lights stayed on. So, can't do that. But there, we got one in. I'm going to put the cover on. I might have to pull it back off to adjust them once it gets dark out. I'm going to get the other one in quick now that I know how to switch the pins. And then we'll do both of them. So here's factory. Here's one side fully installed. Like I said, not my first choice in like the style of these, but they had the best reviews. The ones I really liked were hit or miss with whether the LEDs started to fall out or burn out or do whatever. I didn't want to deal with that. These ones had the best reviews for how bright they were and how long they lasted, so that's why I went with them. Um, the brush guard, I would like to take off this thing. I just, I'm just i not going to use the snow plow anytime soon. I did hook it up with the winch and raised and lowered it. It doesn't work with the plug that's on here and the switch inside. The switch needs to be rewired, so I had to use the jump pack on the on the winch to get it to go up and down, but it does go up and down. But it's so heavy for this little truck. It squatted the front as soon as you lifted it. And I wouldn't want to drive anywhere with the plow on this thing with how soft the suspension is. It would probably just constantly hit the ground. But for doing like your own driveway or whatever, it'd probably be probably be pretty good. But I don't know if I'll ever actually use it. But here's the one fully installed. I'll turn it on quick. I still gotta aim them once it gets dark, but it's pretty much night and day over the factory bulb. And this one was the burnt out one anyways. But yeah, when I turn the brights on, that turns off, that goes to the brights. So I don't really understand how to wire this. I'll have to look into it later and redo it if I can, but not a big deal. I'm gonna get that one in. All right, so they're both in. I kind of aimed them against the lines on the, on the wood, but it's not dark yet, so. So there, they are on. They look super bright, just compared to the stock ones. I mean, I'm not a big fan of how they look, but as long as I can see at night, I guess I could try to turn these off and see if we can do any kind of justice. Shut that quick. Get it as dark as we can with the windows still, but. Okay, no lights. Lights. They have a pretty good cutoff line for being the projectors. They might have to go lower. It's hard to tell until it gets dark. Get it outside against the garage door, but they seem to be pretty bright. I've been kind of thinking about getting rid of this one already. Not because I don't like it, but because I like it so much that I want to get the better model. A newer one with the push button four wheel drive, because this has four wheel drive, like, you just pull that, it engages it, but you have to get out and lock the hubs. 
I want a push button four wheel drive one electric inside and then I also want the dump bed with the scissor lift so it's like a dump truck the bed dumps and then it also goes up like a scissor lift I really want that one too and also I want the 660 cc motor not the 550 so I think I'm gonna do a little bit of maintenance on this thing get it all legal and then try to sell it to get a newer one I picked this one up because it was local and I had the cash on me as kind of like a learning truck to see if I liked it or not if I did get a better one if I didn't I would just get rid of it try to make my money back off of it and be done with them but I think I like it enough to where I'll get this thing all you know good to go and then try to get the better one so that might be the plan not sure yet I mean I'm gonna have to put some money into this thing which I've already spent quite a bit to buy the thing so I probably won't make any money off of it. If anything, I'll probably lose money off of it, but at least I'll know what to expect and still have a little bit of fun with it in the time being, so. Mounting these so I can strap the bike in. Take these old ones out. There's two on each side, and I'm not even sure exactly what they're for, but we don't need them. I'm going to do a trial run. I'm going to use the ramp, load my bike up, strap it down just to make sure those anchors are sturdy and just make sure everything sits good. So here's a little trial run. She's a little, I wonder if I can squeeze it out of the garage in this gap right here. I kind of want to try. Alright, this is what it looks like inside, very small. I'm going to try to squeeze it between the Jeep and the house and park it out in the front yard next to the skyline quick. Should be able to fit, it's small enough. ugly stupid brush guard off the front looks much better I still gotta clean up those few pieces of aluminum brackets they use which literally do nothing I don't understand why they even put them on there uh, clean up the wiring that's hanging out for the snow plow and then get some sheet metal build a little plate where they cut for the snow plow the bumper I did just drive this downtown for a car meet with the CT in the back just to test out the straps make sure everything was good talked to some people for a while and drove it back home it was a little bit dark when I drove it home these headlights are awesome haven't even aimed them like perfectly yet but they're set pretty good and they are bright and the CT didn't go anywhere she strapped in good even with how slow it is it's so much fun to just cruise around town 
this is what I ended up with. They're drying. It's a three-piece center on the bottom, one piece on the top. It's the best I could do with what I was willing to spend on it and put time into it. I mean, it's going to be nothing special. It's just going to make this not look gross. So, it's whatever. I'm not going to spend too much time with sheet metal and rivets and cutting and spend any more money than the two pieces of sheet metal I had to get for this. Alright, I'm all done with this. Might add one more rivet on each side just to make it look a little bit more even. And then I still want to paint the white rivets black. And like I said, this is just a quick cut it, throw it together, paint it, slap it on. I didn't measure anything you know, crazy good. I didn't cut anything crazy straight. I didn't bend anything the way it's supposed to be bent. I just cut it, stuck it on, done with it. Covers up all that gross stuff. So it definitely looks a little better. I mean, it, it doesn't look great, obviously, but it's better. It's all I wanted. Now that all this junk is off, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing reinforcing this really thin aluminum. So I'm sure, like, I'm going to hit something and it's just going to destroy this whole lower piece and probably the top piece too, but it's whatever. As long as it looks good for now, I don't really care. But yeah, one bird, one big rock, one snow chunk, whatever, this thing's done for. But, oh well, it didn't take long to do it. It cost me like $20 in metal, so it is what it is but it's better. And now I wait for my steering arm to show up because the bushing shot so the steering is sloppy. Wait for that to show up. I'm going to order all four tie rods, inners and outers for the front. See how it drives after that now that this weight is off the front because the front struts seemed really really soft and real you know bouncy but now that there's all this weight off the front it might ride a little bit better with the with the struts that are on there if it doesn't and it still rides the same I'm going to order front struts too I have rear brake shoes coming in the mail I have an alternator belt coming in the mail uh, a couple other small things I ordered so once the steering's finished the rear brakes are finished zero shoes left it's just all rust and dust in there so once the brakes are sorted out steering sorted out I'll deal with the suspension after that and then this thing should drive nice um, other than the motors a little iffy I mean I should probably do like a valve adjustment on it makes a little bit of chattering noise you know like the dude said he had the head off to do exhaust valves or something like that so who knows who put the head back on, who retimed it, who set the valves. Um, I just feel like the motor should be a little bit more quiet and smoke a lot less, burn a lot less oil than it does. So worst case, I'm just going to drive this thing until the motor gives up and then either pull it and rebuild this motor or just try to buy another one. I would like to see how much work it is to swap the 660 into this because this is a 550. If it's a bolt and, and go deal, I'll buy a 660 and put it in this and just call it good. I don't know, I have to do some more research on that because I wanted the 660 to begin with. This is a 550, but this is all I could really get my hands on uh, like at the time. So I'm going to run this motor until it doesn't run anymore. I've already had it going about 50 miles an hour. I mean, it was pretty, pretty up there in the RPMs in fifth gear, but... uh it would still go a little faster. I bet it would go. F I bet it go 55, 60 tops. I, you wouldn't want to hold it there for like a long period of time, but it was cruising pretty comfortably at 45, 50 in fifth gear. So, and this thing's just to get me, I think probably three, three and a half miles through town to work and back. That's pretty much all I'll really use it for, other than hauling the bike. If there's a car show that's pretty close and local, I'll put the bike in this and take this thing to the car show with the bike. Um, but, or if I'm buying parts that are close, you know, wheels, any parts I don't want to put in the skyline, I'll throw in the bed of this. 
other bikes that are close enough, because I'm not going to drive this thing, like, super far to different cities or anything. I mean, I could. It would just take a while to take back roads and whatnot. But the main thing is just going to be a to-and-from work truck and for the four-wheel drive in the snow so I can just not worry about the snow and just get to work and get home or get to wherever I need to go, store. Uh, it'll be good to run to the store to get, like, let's say plywood, whatever, just throw it in the back. Uh, and it's good on gas. And it's cheaper to fix and maintain than my big truck. Even though parts are a little harder to get for this, you need to wait a little bit longer for them. They should last a long time. So once I fix the things that need to be done, it should it should be good to go for a long time. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's the new. This is the new rig.